Okay guys, today we're gonna to be talking about the Wooks or Wooks, whatever you wanna call that, uh, Rock 62. And uh, these, or these, these knives have been making their rounds in the community and similar to others, just full disclosure, Wooks or Wooks, they did send this one out to me a while back actually. It's been, it's taken me a little while to uh, get out and test things and use knives and such but I decided that I would finally do a review on this blade and talk about it. And initially, I was very interested in talking about this knife because I saw it at a lot of retail stores, things like Sportsman's, REI, and uh, so not only has Wooks been you know, making their rounds with community or with YouTube, with YouTubers or with other, you know, kind of notable people, but they have also been really pushing their products to consumers. And so I thought it would be interesting to take a, take a quick talk or take a quick minute to talk about this blade, the pros, the cons, what I think about it. And because like I said, it's coming at you from your favorite YouTubers, you see it at sportsmen, you know, is this a solid knife, especially because these knives are going for about 200, anywhere from like 240 to 180 dollars. So they're a little bit on the expensive side. So are you getting a good blade for what it is? Okay, so as always, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon and Instagram, and now let's hop into this blade. So this one as well, I should disclose, is of course the non-treated or non-coated Sleipner steel blade. And this one is their, what they call X-grip handle. So hopefully you guys can see there pretty well that this one is their X-grip. And they originally designed this X-grip and they originally designed this X grip handle uh, based around the Pirelli tires. And honestly, I could see it and believe it, just generally it's the siping of any tire. And the idea is with you know tires, you want siping and cuts to help move fluid to the outer edges of your tires and of course displace it, get rid of it. And the idea is pretty similar with this X grip. So it's in it's execution is a little bit interesting for me i will say i probably would not recommend going for the x grip because while it does have a very interesting kind of gimmick to it or kind of interesting appeal in the fact that it does drain off fluid very well i don't really think that's the most applicable thing or the most realistic kind of uh, situation you'd find yourself in i mean if your handle is like let's say you're dressing a game animal and your hand is becoming so bloody that you're losing traction of your knife it's probably a signal that you're doing something wrong i mean i addressed how quite a few game animals in my time and it does get bloody your hands will get bloody your knife will get bloody but i don't think that there's ever a point where blood is just flowing so freely that uh, like you're dealing with pooling of blood you know and I will say this too when it does come to blood especially given my uh, background I do work with a lot of blood uh, very regularly and I can say the blood does clot very fast so uh, I wouldn't really be too worried about like working with copious amounts of it because usually by the time you do like dress a game animal and stuff the blood is usually pretty clotted so you're not really going to be dealing with like pooling of blood but anyways that's just one of their like marketing pitches to it it might be water it might be mud but once again you know if you find yourself dealing with so much mud caking onto your knife you probably have bigger issues than you know trying to get the mud off your handle in addition to that too having these very deep cuts makes it um as people have said in the past on youtube videos kind of crap collector handles where you know you have such deep grooves that things get lodged in there like what i found already with this knife is um you know like when you're say feather sticking and you're de dealing with a lot of wood like little wood shavings and stuff get into the grip and it's very hard to remove them because you have such deep grooves lastly too the other thing i kind of dislike about this x grip is that they really made the handle extra thick to accommodate for these grooves and I wish that uh, instead of making the handle thicker to accommodate for these grooves they would have just cut deeper into the handle and kind of left the handle similar to the other thicknesses of their other uh, handle scales now the good news is if you did end up with one of these they are very interchangeable or the scales are very interchangeable in fact that's one of the kind of marketing um, pitches that they make with this knife and they even send you allen keys 
to, um, or not necessarily Allen keys, but Torx bits um, to remove the handle scales should you want something else. So that is pretty cool. So that is pretty cool. Overall, I'll probably just leave this one the way it is and uh, just deal with it. It's not so uncomfortable. And I will say that as far as the traction goes, the it does look sharp, but it really does not actually feel too bad in hand aside from that extra bulk and thickness. Okay, so that is the handle and the ergonomics. The ergonomics are overall pretty squared away. Just the handle is a little bit of a letdown. So aside from that, uh, what do I think about the performance of the cutting edge? The cutting edge is pretty good. It's probably the best part to this, but it is also the most basic. So what you're dealing with here is a flat grind and there's nothing entirely wrong with this flat grind. It is, I will say, nice and high. So some people might call this a high saber grind or flat grind. Ultimately, it's the same thing. Um, from my experience, uh, just like any high or near full flat grind, it's very slicey and of course out of box, it is very sharp. In addition to that, it is made out of Sleipner steel. Sleipner is not my favorite, especially at this price point. I do wish it was something a little bit more high end because unfortunately a lot of people or a lot of a lot of companies like Lion Steel and Italian companies, they have things like Nylox, Sleipner, and these steels that kind of sound foreign. And that's kind of because they are foreign, but they are ultimately just foreign products of very similar basic steels like D2. And Sleipner is essentially that. It is a little bit better, uh, slightly improved version of D2. And once again, there's nothing entirely wrong with D2. I know that... Uh, you know, five years ago, the high-end high knives were using D2. And so nowadays, of course, many have moved on to CPM like uh, S30V, 20CV. Uh, so now most of the time it's those alloyed steels. But uh, yeah, I, I'm a little bit kind of disappointed in that regard, but it is still a good quality steel and uh, it's not too shabby. One thing I will give a slight knock to this blade about, and I understand that on a lot of high-end knives, the or knives that are pitching themselves as high-end, they try to you know make the knives rounded and comfortable and uh, you know feel like quality in that regard. But being that the spine is rounded as well, at least partially, of course, you cannot strike a ferro rod off the back of this blade uh, without modifications. And that is a little bit unfortunate too. In addition, I do want to note the uh, jimping on this thing is just a little bit weird. I don't really know why they chose to go with two individual like kind of blocks of jimping. I don't necessarily dislike it. Of course, the less jimping, the better I think the uh, spine of the blade is. But the fact that they went with these two kind of like blocks of jimping, I don't really know why they chose to do it. It doesn't really change the traction pattern that much. For me, I, I think that, uh, for me, I think that the, for me, I think the jimping is just fine. Um, it's okay. It's definitely not too aggressive, but of course my preference is always no jimping. So essentially that is the blade and the setup for it. As far as the knife itself goes, I think for $200, I'd really just wanna see a little bit more improved ergonomics. And uh, you know, for me, this knife I think is pitched well because it's pitched at a lot of common consumers. Once again, you're seeing this in places like Sportsman's right next to things like Gerber Strong Arms and you know, your very basic kind of entry level outdoor wilderness blades doesn't necessarily make them bad, but I think that the Wux Rock 62 is really pitched towards people that want an upgrade. You know, they see those, you know, they see those Gerber strong arms and maybe that's what they used last season or maybe that's what they used for camping and they weren't impressed or they just want the next step up. And I think that's where Wux is trying to push their knife. And for that regard, I think there's a lot of merit going for it. Of course, when you have, you know, a big brand, you know, or you are in a big box store similar to things like Sportsman's or Walmart, you know, there are always for a price point if if you're one of those nice people there's always better deals and better steals out there for better prices but you know i think for the general consumer it definitely is okay now as far as the 
Now, I think the biggest critique that I have for this blade, especially being that it is $200 or actually over $200 everywhere I've seen it, either, you know, in person or online, aside from maybe like, you know, online, I've seen a couple at 180, but I think the biggest thing I dislike about this blade is the sheath. And like I said, for $200, I was really disappointed with the sheath itself. And I will tell you guys, multiple reasons I really dislike it. The first is the fact that ultimately it just looks and feels really cheap. Now I know they say that this is Italian leather and uh, you know, I don't doubt that this is actually like good leather. It does feel pretty tough and it feels pretty good. And the overall thickness of the actual leather isn't too bad, but the way that they constructed this and the fact that there isn't, uh, gosh, I'm trying to think of the word, but there is, there's a technical term, but there usually is a piece of leather stacked between the two edges of a leather sheath. If you do this kind of fold over kind of pancake leather sheath, usually there's a liner there and that is missing on this sheath. And I think that that is very indicative of cheap knives because of course it's a cost cutting measure. It also though is a little bit of an issue too, in my opinion, because as the knife gets used in the leather sheath, of course being leather wears, there's nothing protecting these rivets from your edge. So at some point the edge will like contact those rivets and likely damage your edge which is very unfortunate the next point too is this ridiculous belt uh, belt loop here it is one very small and two because it's using such a thin strip of leather and it's not like or it's using such a short strip of leather it's making this uh, kind of belt loop very um, ovular or basically like a circle so instead it should really be more flattened out and that would happen if they actually used a little bit more leather and made this belt loop a little bit longer so that is another thing that like i said on the outs outskirt or just you know when you look at this thing from the outset it just looks like a super cheap leather sheath and the other thing too is lastly this little um, belt loop here or this little uh, retention strap I should say not belt loop is very uh, precariously placed and notably there are a lot of you know uh, there are a lot of predecessors to this knife that have used similar setups to this notably I think Knives of Alaska and other kind of cheaper knife companies where if you're not very careful with this you can very easily slice this uh, little retention strap off with a properly sharpened knife and of course once again being that this is leather it would not take much just one accidental wrong move and you trying to pop that blade out and pop you're just literally going to cut that strap right off so that's something that I find very disappointing for the price point. This sheath, there's really no reason that they couldn't do even just a, you know, basic, like what SE does with their very basic, you know, plastic sheaths. They don't have to necessarily be, you know, uh, Kydex. They could just be injection molded plastics. Uh, those are far more versatile and far better in quality than this. And uh, that is a, this sheath is a really big turnoff. And like I said, I think instantly when you, you know, hold this knife up in its sheath, it instantly makes this knife look much cheaper than it really is. And honestly, like I said, there are a lot of merits going for this blade and it's really not a horrible knife itself. Like I said, there's a few things that I would recommend improving and kind of just changing. But uh, from the standpoint of, you know, a generic kind of every man's knife, this really isn't too bad, especially for what most people will be looking for. I just really think that that sheath is terrible and they do offer aftermarket sheaths on their website, but I think they were like $70 for an aftermarket sheath that actually improves on most of what's wrong with this sheath. So a little bit unfortunate to see that they want you to spend, you know, over $200 on the stock knife itself and then turn around and spend another close to $100 on the sheath. So ultimately, I would say that there are better knives for the price, but if you do end up with a Wux Rock 64, it is not a horrible knife. Uh, just like I said, kind of generic in my opinion, doesn't really like push any boundaries. And I think that they do want a lot of money for it. And uh, I do wish that they would spend a little bit more time improving the end product.